Before we get to today's lowly contender, allow me just a minute to tell you about a monstrously incredible one named Gigabash. This rompin' stompin' kaiju brawler has just launched another DLC lineup of four legends, but this time from the Ultraman franchise, including Ultraman himself, Alien Baltan, Chimera, Ultraman Tiga, and they all come equipped with a variety of weapons, combos, and insanely destructive ultimate moves. In Gigabash, you can also enjoy local four-player free-for-alls, arcade mode, minigames, several short but sweet story campaigns, or battle online via crossplay with all the platforms you see here. In addition to Ultraman, you can also rumble with some other titans of tokusatsu like Godzilla, Gigan, Mechagodzilla, and Destroya to play out those dream matches you've always fantasized about. And you can view all the destruction with the brand new beta replay mode, which gives you a ton of control to create your own kaiju mini movies. So hit the link in the description and pinned comment below to check out the game on the platform of your choice. Thanks again to Passion Republic Games for the sponsorship. Without further ado, let's dive back into some bad fighting games. Welcome back, warriors, to the worst fighting game, where we're all still celebrating slash commiserating over the induction of our new champion, Iron and Blood Warriors of Ravenloft. It's been a few weeks, and now that the dust has settled, I think D&D and the mantle of the worst fighting game has made for an absolutely stellar... Yeah, that's gonna be a new thing from now on. Anyway, throughout this whole button bashing journey, I've often received requests to take on the surprisingly robust subgenre of fighting games that have heavily skewed towards the female persuasion, where the one and only rule is no boys allowed. Now, a particular name that keeps coming up in this conversation is a more recent one, so on the year of its 10th anniversary, let's take a look back at Girl Fight, the 2013 downloadable only all-female fighting game for the Xbox 360 and PS3, and with a similar critical reception as recent non-fighting game blockbusters as Lord of the Rings Golem and The Rise of Kong. But will the bountiful bosoms and boring brawling of Girl Fight be enough to vanquish Iron and Blood? Well, we won't know for sure until we get it in the ring! But yeah, the real story of Girl Fight starts with its developer Kung Fu Factory, who specialize in a lot of things you may or may not have ever heard of. The same year they released this fight of girls, for example, they also put out Spartacus Legends, a bizarre freemium fighting game that if you told me you played, I wouldn't believe you. And also, for some reason, this girl fight needed two completely different publishers to help squirt out, namely Microprose and Majesco, with that last one really not being that surprising. As for Kung Fu Factory, let's see what else they did. Uh, Supremacy MMA, yeah, uh, Bellator. They worked on a ton of mobile games like uh, WWE Champions, which of all things, if you can believe it, is a WWE game that plays like Candy Crush. It's basically just moving gems around and breaking colored gems. <laughs> but putting Kung Fu Factory's back catalog aside, the real mind behind Girl Fight seems to be a gentleman, of course it was, by the name of Ricky Rukavina, who was formerly a producer over at Universal Games, who worked on the likes of Scarface, Spyro, Enter the Dragonfly, and The Thing, before briefly joining Kung Fu Factory, where he became the creative director, the executive producer, and the music supervisor behind Girl Fight. So, uh, yeah. This was his baby. Obviously, the super unique <coughs> behind Girl Fight was to appeal to the DOA crowd with a more budget-friendly option, and without any of those nasty trouser snakes spoiling all the fun. Ten years ago, though, games were either full price or downloadables that you'd typically only be able to access through services like Xbox Live Arcade and PSN, and Girl Fight is absolutely one of those games that did exist. While it's impossible to know exactly how well it sold, critically, as I mentioned before, it fared quite poorly, with pretty much every outlet and even most fans criticizing the bland character designs, lack of content, basic no-frills gameplay, and barren online lobbies. 
Well, after Girl Fight's release, though, Kung Fu Factory continued to make throwaway mobile products up until at least 2021, I think? And really, that's all she wrote. Uh, in summary, if you feel bad that Mr. Rukavina's dreams of creating a giant franchise based on all of his fetishes didn't pan out, don't be! Because he's currently trying to hawk NFTs and blockchain shit via something called Macroverse, so, you know, no big loss there. So, y yeah, that's basically the entire in-depth story of Girl Fight, so... Duh... I will say this, Woman War has a look. Whether that look is good, well, that's subjective, but they did go for something here. It seems the game revolves around some type of digital world that is controlled by something called the Foundation? I, I don't know, but it means all the menus have this computerized virtual reality aesthetic, from the menus, to the HUD, to the choice of music. Look, personally, I find this type of stuff a bit bland, but for 2013, I guess it's okay. What's weird is that this doesn't really transfer over to the roster, save for, like, one of them? This isn't a fighting game where the cast are a bunch of technological Tron-like beings, but just a motley crew of grungy girls who are all wearing some derivative combination of underwear and various straps and belts. The stages are kind of like this too, in that they're all burnt out buildings, arctic bases with the fucking mad cat stomping around, and even some cityscapes with aliens running amok, but these are all digital environments that aren't real in terms of the story. The bouts don't actually happen there, which means they aren't all that interesting. This bleeds over onto other aspects too, like whenever you defeat an opponent, they disintegrate back into the Digiverse, and you never see beyond this veil. Are all these ladies sitting around hooked up to unsold PSVRs strapped around their heads? Are their minds getting uploaded onto the internet? It's never explained exactly how this world works, so it's all kind of vague and confusing. What's not confusing though is the type of costumes and roleplay Mr. Rukavina likes. We have Soldier Girl, Ninja Girl, Serial Killer Girl, Punk Girl, Samurai Girl, Cyber girl, wrestler girl, and secret agent girl. Basically, a bunch of costumes straight out of the sexy section of a spirit of Halloween. The problem, unlike other franchises with a majority of female representation, is that you forget who these characters are and what they even look like the instant you've defeated them and moved on. They're just so interchangeable, and since none of them even have voice clips outside of a few yells and grunts, they're all basically charisma vacuums. They don't even have real names, they're all like War Child, Viper, and Chrome, just straight out of the big book of 90s era image comic books. Visually, the game looks okay, but it still feels a little bottom shelfy, even by 2013 downloadable standards. The facial modeling is odd in that they couldn't quite decide if they wanted a realistic or anime look, so they boldly went for a weird hybrid that just ain't right. Big bang of Tao Feng off this one. Also, I'm not sure if this is dishonest or they just plain forgot, but when selecting your character outside of ironically Soldier Girl, Punk Girl, and Cyber Girl, the entire roster is armed to the fucking teeth with machine guns, shotguns, pistols, swords, but none, absolutely none of that cool shit appears anywhere in game. It's just the character art lying to you. As for endings, well, there are some, kinda? When you go through the arcade mode, each match is prefaced by one sentence from the announcer, which reveals a shred about the character's past, but once you've defeated the final boss, all you get is a score breakdown, and the second you've dismissed that screen, you're immediately presented with a steamy, sexy, PG-13 image of your fighter. Just, just raw and unprompted, and y yeah, that's it. To actually learn more about your digi girl, you have to spend the points you earn through winning matches to unlock police reports that detail what they're up to in their previous lives before they were digitized. There's quite a few entries you can unlock, and I do appreciate the attempt at lore, but these are quite dry and not all that interesting. I think if they had just made a few ending images for each fighter with an appropriate voiceover, I'm not expecting CGI here, it would have been like a, a thousand times better than what they did, but who am I to criticize the makers of WWE Champions? 
There is one abject positive to the presentation though, which is that there are a few decent tracks in Girl Fight. It's all basic techno-y stuff and some songs sound really similar to each other, but none of them are bad and one or two even have lyrics, so yeah, that's kind of something. But, you know, the music not being ear garbage isn't exactly a ringing endorsement. Uh, it isn't something that should be praiseworthy. But, but you know what I'll be giving even less praise to? While Girl Fight doesn't have anything close to a legit rep, it's still just shocking how basic, stripped down, underdesigned, and underwhelming it actually is to play. I'm sorry, I'm just being as honest and upfront here as possible, folks. You know me. Now, off the bat, that doesn't mean it's dreadful or broken by any stretch of the imagination, and it actually reminds me of Fight Club a little bit, in that there's so little to learn and master. Despite each fighter being like a wrestler, ninja, or soldier, all of them play really similarly to each other with no effort put into diversifying their supposed fighting styles, as some of them even share the exact same throw animations and combos. What this means is that there's no specialists, no character that has like a ton of aerial attacks and mobility, no one that excels in throws or counters, there's not even basic archetypes like someone that's speedier than the others but doesn't do a whole lot of damage, and also nobody uses any weapons, ever. The move lists are also incredibly limited, having less overall moves than a bunch of 3D fighters I've covered before, and also bereft of anything that's remotely interesting. Yeah, there's some pretty decent throw animations here and there, but there isn't anything else flashy or fun to look at. No projectiles, big horizontal moves, AOEs, anything like that. There is a counter system that works exactly like DOA, and I mean exactly, and while that is creatively bankrupt, at least at least it's, you know, a thing. The only, and I mean the only thing that Girl Fight does that's even slightly unique from every other 3D fighter is the Psy system, which is not a very interesting system. What this is, is a selection of basic buffs that you choose before the start of the bout, with each one costing a certain amount of your Psy meter, the, this thing. So there's one that sets you on fire, which gives you extra damage for 5 seconds, one that leeches life from your opponent for 5 seconds, one that turns you invisible for 5 seconds, etc, etc. And yeah, that's all you use meter for. You can enhance your moves, there's no supers, no level 3s, no rage attacks, nothing like, you know, fun. What's worse is that all the girls select from the same pool of Psy moves, so none of them are exclusive or work better if utilized by a specific fighter. It's almost as if it, they went out of their way to make this system as boring as possible, as it just doesn't change the core combat in any significant way. Now there is one singular side move that's this ground pound thing that's actually pretty good, but you have to spend your points to unlock it, but who's gonna bother with that when there's all these hot ass nudie picks to unlock? Wrapping things up, there's training mode, which is fine, you know, it works, online multiplayer, which is literally useless in 2023, and judging by reviews from back in the day, was also useless in 2013, then there's versus, and finally arcade mode, which are both pretty self-explanatory. But wait, arcade mode is not self-explanatory at all. For some reason, inexplicably, when you first boot up Girl Fight, you can only select one character in arcade mode, a uh, soldier girl. You then have to beat arcade mode fully with her to unlock the next character, and so on and so forth. Like, why? While it's incredibly common to lock someone away like a boss at the outset, why like 95% of the roster? Just stop being so weird, girl fight! Whew, uh, okay. So, fortunately, the general feel of this fight of girls is alright, which is an absolute godsend after it being so odd, limited, and slapdash everywhere else. Combat moves at a very solid pace, it's not too slow and unresponsive, it's not so fast it's unplayable, it's able to maintain its frame rate in almost every situation. 
Now, there are absolutely some animations that feel really stiff, as well as ones that are hard to tell exactly what's going on, but those aren't as frequent as you'd think. Obviously, I can't comment on how it feels to play online. I asked Justin if he wanted to help me test it, but he said... Oh, wait, bro. Stop, stop asking. You know, which is fair. But again, going back to reviews from 10 years ago, it seems no one had anything good to say about how the online performed and the rare situation they were able to find a match. Honestly, beyond that, I don't have much else to say about how these ladies feel. I really should have thought of a better way to say that. But is its incredibly low review average justified, or has Girl Fight spent the last decade suffering from a poor reputation that's been overblown? This is a bit of a weird one, I ain't gonna lie, because again, there's absolutely nothing egregious here, except for this lying artwork! But, by that same token, there's nothing really good here either. The fact of the matter is, Girl Fight is just boring to play, and even the titillation aspect is half-baked, as none of these girls are particularly memorable or all that appealing, when compared to the dozens or hundreds of other ladies in the fighting game world. In fact, if you do want to play something that's like this, I suggest Fight Angel on Steam. Now, PSA, it's still trashy and has tons of creepy customization and is a little too expensive for what it offers, but it's super over the top and is way, way more fun to play. Anyway, Girl Fight's solid feel, bland but inoffensive mechanics, and low price point, I think it's $10, has it softly landing in the that'll be just fine tier. Also, I should mention, with the induction of Iron and Blood, I felt it prudent to make a new former champ tier for obvious reasons. It's a dignified position that both Expect No Mercy and Criticom have rightfully earned. And with that, Warriors, we come to the end of another scintillating showdown. While these ladies gave it their all, I knew deep down in my loins they wouldn't be able to withstand against the mighty Warriors of Ravenloft. Why, you know, things would have had to have broken down into a straight-up catfight with all these bikini karate babes to really stand a chance that- Oh no, oh, I forgot those are real game names. No, please don't demonetize me, YouTube. No, no!